Well, hey folks, it's Kent with MrTruck.com. I'm, you know, at the big plant, Cimarron plant in Chickasha, Oklahoma. Plant number one. We, uh, plant number two in Manhattan, Kansas, we're going to talk about a little later. But I'm here with Ben Jensen, you're like the president, right? Yes, sir. Cool, it's, he's the big cheese. We're talking to the right guy. And the new news that's probably happened several years ago is being taken over, well, taken over, but turned over to the employees and out yes. in your company that everybody owns part of it. That's so cool. Yes, it's thank you. It's been a, a great change for our company. Uh, that happened in November of 2018. We became employee owned. Michael and Lynn Terry, the founders of Cimarron, operated and owned Cimarron for 18 years. And when they decided to retire, they chose to sell Cimarron to make us employee owned rather than sell it to a private equity or to another trailer manufacturer. Um, they really were really cared about the employees and about the town of Chickasha and our dealers and wanted things to stay as consistent as they could and, and grow and felt like the best path for Cimarron was to become employee owned and it's been a fabulous adventure for us. For sure. well, I, I did, the concept is great. I really like the idea of the people who build it own it. Yes. And so everybody has a piece of the rock and they, you know, they give a little more attention to it and it's the whole idea makes sense. And I, I like that better than ever, all these private companies buying up everybody and selling pieces off and who knows where they're going to ship them to. Yeah. So no, it's, when you want a company to stay the same and not necessarily through kids or grandkids, but through the employees, I think that's the, the best way to have a, a longevity out of the company. It really is. And I've learned a lot about employee ownership. I didn't know much about ESOPs or employee ownership companies before this. Um, I've learned quite a bit through this. I went to a, a, a employee ownership conference in Pennsylvania for two weeks that first year. Um, our parent company, Foliance, which is completely employee owned, we're in, we also have a company that builds ambulances in Iowa, and then a, uh, the Gazette newspaper communications company in Iowa as well. But collectively about 500 employees, but Cimarron's the biggest part of that and in manufacturing, but we're all employee owners. And yes, being an employee owner, we've seen much more engagement through our workforce here in Chickasha and our recent expansion into Kansas. But compared to other companies, I think it, it really sets us apart from an ownership standpoint and a, a future a longevity. For a long time, a lot of us asked, you know, what's gonna happen to Cimarron? What's gonna happen to Cimarron when they decide to retire? Well, now we know, we own it. And yeah. it's up to us to make the right decisions and, and to build quality products, take care of our dealers, take care of our customers, and take care of each other for the future. Well, that's true. That's what I think it is, the future. I mean, you know, it's people are going to really care about what they do and you got some great employees I remember coming yes. here in the summer and you had that ice cream bars in the hot part of the day <laughs> right. and it's like a big family and that's the way it should be and everybody wants to to be involved in that that way you can expand out I imagine there will be other places you're going to be expanding to and maybe you'll have a whole bunch of manufacturing <laughs> plants I don't know we'll see we've had a quite a lot of expansion in the last two years it's been exciting uh, you know when COVID hit that was a curveball that nobody had experienced before um, some immediate changes and retraction we had to do then, but then the, the demand for our product, the, the customer feedback, the dealers that we have, we work with a phenomenal group of dealers. They've allowed us to grow between our dealers and our customers. Um, our employees build a high quality product and the diversified products we build, um, we grew coming out of COVID. Uh, we've added onto our facility here. We completed a 46,000 square foot expansion a year ago this month and uh, we've moved into that over the past year as well as added on 2800 square feet to our, our main building uh, we've had to add office space here on our campus <laughs> because of more employees and then this spring we really had a unique opportunity to purchase the assets of a, a previous trailer company in kansas and hire their people and grow so we are right at 200 employees now two years ago we were sitting at 117 employees you know, you're in the middle of oil well country here, so I'm sure you had a little bit of problems sometimes with the seasonal thing between oil wells and manufacturers and getting good welders to stay forever. If they own part of the rock, it's much better than if they want to go back and forth to oil fields. It is. We offer a lot of stability here at Cimarron, and it is a very competitive labor environment here in Oklahoma. Um, we offer a lot of stability compared to that uh, work style, lifestyle of the oil field. Yeah. You know, those guys are running 24-7, they're away from home, you know, they're going to work multiple weeks on without time off. We offer a solid 40-hour work shift here. Um, our people are done by usually 10 o'clock on Friday. Sometimes we have to work a little overtime on Friday to meet the production goal, but they're home every night, um, can be part of their family life, and 
think that's very important as a company. It's something Michael and Lynn and Terry always in, uh, we're very passionate about is that we've got to have a great structure here so people can take care of their families financially and time standpoint too. Oh, that's great. That's great. Yeah. This is cool. Well, let's go check out the rest of the buildings. All right. We'll go take a tour. Thanks, Thank Ben. You. Thank you. So, wow, these are cool. You got robots in here. We do. We've got a robotic welder here to build a lot of our routine parts. It's really helped us been able to grow our production and uh, take some stress off of our parts department and allowing us to grow overall. Well, that's so cool. I'm going to watch, watch that welder go. Look at that robot. Then over here, all the different jigs that yes. make things with that robot welder. We've got over 40 different fixtures or jigs. We're building different components on it. Wow, that's awesome. Yeah. It's like a modern factory here. Keep advancing for sure. Our employees <laughs> keep coming up with great ideas how to keep improving. That's cool. Yep. Wow, some big cranes in here. Yep. What in the world is this giant building? <laughs> This building, Kent, is our new trim shop facility here at Cimarron Trailers. We started construction on this two years ago, December of 2020. We finished it a year ago in 21 and got moved into it and really adjusting to this new space. It's 46,000 square feet. It's basically a, a football field under roof. And this is where we do all the finish work on our trailers. Uh, take this in comparison, we operated for 21 years in a 9,000 square foot building, bringing materials into that all day. This, we have all of our materials stored inside. Um, with two production lines and then a final wash bay. We're, we're building a high quality product. We wanted a very clean, neat, organized trim shop facility to be able to, to produce a quality product to send to our customers. Don't go away, Mr. Truck.TV. We'll be right back. This building is 46,000 square feet. It's 325 feet long, 140 feet wide. We have two production lanes running down the center of this building and then with material stored on each side. So it's allowed us to have more trailers in production in the finished work. In the past, we would have four to five trailers in the building. We can have up to 10 now in this building doing finish work on it. And with the variety of trailers we're building today, it really helps us always keeping something moving rather than one large trailer shutting down the production line, you know, ahead or behind of it. So. Cool, and another wash base. Now you got two big wash bays. We have two wash bays. That has been a bottleneck in the past, and we knew if we wanted to grow and build more trailers, we had to physically get more trailers washed. So our, our final wash bay, which is this wash bay here, it's only soap and water and wax. There's no acid in this wash bay. Okay. The, the first wash bay in the build shop is where the, the acid wash happens to get the trailer initially very clean and this is a final more detail type wash well that is real cool because you know to make these things shine you got some polished aluminum i see yep. along with your normal aluminum and oh yeah yeah so there's beautiful trailers thank you so now you got a tornado shelter break room classroom wow so tell me about this tornado shelter this is really a bulletproof place to be it is we wanted to have a safe place for our employees to go in if we get caught in a storm we live right here in tornado alley in the middle of oklahoma and with 150 to 160 employees here we needed a safe place for our employees if we get caught in a storm um, with that in mind when we build our new trim shop we built this into the structure it's a 12 inch thick concrete wall and roof it has deadbolt doors it's rated for a storm shelter day to day it's our break room for the employees to enjoy during breaks or lunch and it's also a safe a, a classroom for trainings we do monthly safety training as well as other department head meetings so we have zoom room capability in there we do presentations but a, a very multi-purpose room we're able to build into our new trim shop facility well that's cool way to look out for your employees now this is what i need a tornado room <laughs> yeah, our tornado shelter but the day in day out it's our employee break room as well as our safety training room uh, kind of classroom. Oh, look at all those microwaves. Yeah. Awesome. Refrigerators. Oh, yeah, this is too good. So, this is cool. I guess it would make a good Zoom room because, you know, Zoom, everybody's doing Zoom conferences. Yeah. I've done them. We can Zoom right here. We can do presentations. Yeah. There's three lines in here? There's two production two lines. Two production lines. And then we have areas here to the side. We can bring trailers back in and do a final detail on. Part of our quality control is that we're looking at them again after that final wash. But in perspective, a couple years ago, this 
you know, once they were washed and they were just outside to do that final walkthrough, whether it was 110 degrees or 20 degrees, we're having to look at them outside. Now we're able to bring them back inside, do that final detail, the final cleaning, make sure everything's perfect before that trailer ships out. I like the idea that coming from one side and go out the other side instead of trying to figure out how to back them out or whatever, you know, the old way of running the forklifts everywhere. Now, what is that efficient system you use? I always forget the name of it so that everything's done in, in a manner that is quick and efficient and makes sense. Right. We've sent all of our employees through lean training classes and that's really a, a method used that started by the Japanese and kind of the, to the Toyota type model. But that's locating your tools close to your workspace eliminating clutter, eliminating waste. And so all of our employees have been through lean training. It's something we believe in. Um, it's, it's always, you can always be better at it, right? We've made yeah. steps, but we can always be better where we're at. Well, that's too cool. I've been to a lot of horse trader factories and you got one of the smoothest, best running ones I've seen. It's more, much like a truck manufacturer does. And that is so cool. Cause you gotta be efficient or, you know, it gets, it gets too costly. Well, we really try to have a, an efficient production line, yet we're custom building this product. It's not the same repeatable product day in, day out, but there are similarities from one trailer to the other. So you break it down into different areas where you manufacture certain things or do certain stages to a trailer. And the fact that we're able to custom build trailers on an assembly line, I think really separates us. Oh, that's good. Whenever trailer is a, is a, is a custom trailer and that along with all the employee owned people here, they got pride in their work and everybody wants to help things get better. Dad, do you get like normal feedback sessions from your from your people or how does that work? Well, we're, we're in close contact with our employees. We have department heads and lead men. Um, I'm out in the shop a couple times a day. Todd Snead, our, our operations manager, is out here all the time with our employees. And then twice a year we have what's called a pulse survey and that's an anonymous survey with about 10 questions and a couple areas for feedback. and. We learn a lot through that and then we try to act on the things that we can and make improvements and we're a company that we tout ourselves on better by design we're always trying to be better tomorrow than we are today some things are easy to make changes on some things take time but we're, we're always focused and never settling i always like that better by design that's cool <laughs> <laughs> yeah it really encompasses all we are about simron our product our culture our people that's awesome this shop we basically have five different stations we have our wiring bay the mat bay the hardware, um, a ceiling where we seal all the seams on the trailer, and then an inspection bay. We've really been able to break that down into stations and then storing materials close to that. And just providing a very clean, bright environment where we can really see the trailer and produce a high quality product. This is an eight horse trailer, a uh, real custom order. They're doing all the hardware on it now and then they'll get the rip pod installed on it tomorrow. Yeah. And then behind that, we've got a custom show pig trailer with the pins in it, in the mat bay, and then a living quarter shell behind that in the wiring bay right now. Still similarities between models. Well, that's a neat way to do it, have them all away from all the dust and the welding yes. to do the final stuff, the hay pot up there. Wow, you've got plenty of room for that to open up up in here. Yeah. So this thing's what, 14 feet high? This building actually has uh, 18 foot sidewalls. Wow. So again, that was a design, you know, our old building, they couldn't lift that lit up all the way. Yeah, yeah. And then being able to keep all of our inventory here in this one building, one spot made it a lot more efficient for this building and inventory control. Cool. So Ben, you know, I grew up with John Wayne and, and Gene Autry and, and Roy Rogers and cowboy movies were everywhere. And I always thought that was cool and everybody had horses and I saw where it started to slow down with the urban growth and all that and you had less people in the horses and you've seen a big turnaround now with what's going on on TV with all the new movies coming out, the new uh, shows, the Yellowstone, you talked about that. So that's what's cool. So you, you have a lot of faith in the horse industry going further that's going to be growing again. I do. I'm, I'm as excited now about the horse industry and the Western sports lifestyle as I've ever been. I grew up, you know, showing horses, high school rodeoing, showing pigs and cattle in 4-H. Um, but the, the industry right now, the horse industry, I think is as good as it's been that I've ever seen at my age. There's more horses on TV now than any time I can remember from shows like Yellowstone or 1883, movies with horses in them. Um, and then the Cowboy Channel has been phenomenal for you know putting the Western sports, the Western lifestyle on TV, the rodeos, the cuttings, the reinings, all that has so much more visibility along with RFD TV. 
really exposing our industry to more people and exciting those that have always had a passion for it to be engaged in the industry. The junior rodeos, the youth events is where I've seen so much growth both in the horses and in livestock. There's so many opportunities for these kids to show or to rodeo or to compete year round. And it's, it's really a family sport. And that's the part I love about that we're building a product that's keeping a family together on the weekends. They're not just sending their kid with a coach on the bus. That's time in the pickup. It's time you know, together as a family that you don't get back. Those are, are special years as your kids are growing up. I've just experienced it with my son graduating this year. Still got a daughter at home showing, thankfully. But those are moments that we're making as a family, and I'm proud that we build a product that keeps families together. I've always noticed that your mats are about twice as thick as a lot of people, but your wall, your, your, that your, your kick wall is all one piece all the way through. Yes. So. You can do that when you got them big rolls like that. Yeah, we, we buy the, the big rolls and all the wall mat, you know, per side is going to be one piece. The floor mats are going to be in five foot sections, but all the wall mat is going to be one piece for that wall. And then the mat that we buy, it is a high quality mat that has an actual fiber inside of it that keeps it from tearing. Uh, there is obviously a less expensive mat that we could buy, but it's mat that easily tears, but we buy the higher quality mats to use in our Cimarron trailers. Well, that's good because, you know, that back wall, kick wall gets kicked. Yes, <laughs> it does. I've seen them get destroyed by other manufacturers' trailers, yeah. but well, that's awesome. It's nice to have one piece, just like your roof. That one piece design is wonderful. We'll talk yes. about that a little bit later. Is that 5 eighths or how thick is it? Yeah, that's a 5 eighths floor mat there. Uh, we have two different yeah. sizes based on the type of trailer. That's awesome. True, and you got such tall ceilings, you got a lot of ventilation in here. We have a lot of ventilation, a lot of doors in the summertime, we got the big fans, but then also the height lets us utilize a lot of height on storage racks. And just, you know, a taller building makes you feel more open-minded, more creative, yeah. and uh, allow more space. Well, that's good, that's good. Very comfortable environment for employees, a lot of natural lighting with the skylights we added in here. So cool to have a generator in all the air compressors and they're all tied together. An exhaust pipe. Man, oh macro. Man, you guys are just as good as Ford and GM and Ram. <laughs> Maybe someday. We're trying. <laughs> I just have a bunch of roofs on things too. Yep. Keep them out of the sun and the hail and all that. Yeah. Wow. Oh. Okay. Well, that's great. Yep. And look at all these trolleys, man. This is like assembly <laughs> line special. This is Henry Ford would be proud of this place. Well, we hopefully we make him proud too. It's, <laughs> you know, we, our product is really designed to be custom built on an assembly line. We have two production lines going through our facility. Um, the one on the right is the less complicated trailers. The line on the left are the bigger, more complex trailers that take a little more time. And then with our expansion this year, we added some custom bays where they'll actually start with the floor and build it from the floor up in one position. Well, that's but, cool, and they start out upside down? Yes, they start out upside down, uh, they build the floors, that tongue and groove extrusion, weld that to the main beam. Um, looks like this floor has a little bit more work to be done, and they'll be flipping this over this afternoon. You know, we've, this trailer, they've got everything kind of clamped up, they'll get it squared up, put the top rail on it, and then they'll start with all their horizontal tubing. We pan back over here to the to line one, the trailer, that has the rear frame on it, the rear doors. Yeah. A little more welding there and it'll be ready to roll down to the next station. That's cool. And I keep squaring all this up yep. and tacking it in place and then building it all together. My goodness. And that post is where you split the, with the dressing room and the stalls or? This That's post is actually one. where a divider will be hanging off of this post. Okay. Um, And all these. Yep. So this trailer already has the rear frame mounted on it with the doors. Of course, it's still plastic on the, the white seat to protect it, keep it from getting scratched. Yeah. Lots of talented welders you have. We do. We're, we're fortunate to live here in the country with welding's part of the culture. And we're also got a lot of great teachers here that can help somebody learn to weld. Oh, cool. And you use jigs for everything. You got the wall jigs. You got all kinds of jigs. Rear assembly is ready for the next trailers. Everything's kind of built just in time manufacturing. So yeah. we can have the next parts ready and be organized in our production. Cool. All the materials are stacked right next to where you need them. Right. Unload it and put it right where we're going to use it so we don't have to handle it multiple times. That's true. That's very good. You got to be efficient.
So are those rift bows or? That is a rift bow, yes. This is an air conditioner frame that's already welded together. So they oh, can yeah. just set it up there and weld it to the top rail. Yeah. Trying to be efficient there. So this goes outside and then you have a bunch of railing. That's part of your system too, is out through that door. We do, it's, it's a cold day here in December. So we've got the door closed, <laughs> but we've got about four different roller tracks to slide those goosenecks in on, depending on size. Yeah, that's really efficient. So the whole neck structure is all steel. It's steel and then it's powder coated. Yeah. The coupler's made by B&W out of Humboldt, Kansas. Yeah. All American steel, nothing imported or nothing cast. It's yeah, they, they keep changing how they do the latch on these things. Every time I see a new one, there's another latch on it. We've worked with them to design a lower profile latch and yeah. listen to customer feedback. That's and cool. you recycle all the leftovers. All the awesome. Yeah, all the aluminum's recycled. That's the way to go. Extrusion in sheet, all that. Yeah, you're a green company is what you do with recycled yeah. water in the wash bays. And yeah. That's good. You're a good community partner. Yep, we have to be good stewards of what we're, what we're blessed with. Look at all those sheets. And how long are those single pieces? These pieces are 46 feet long. Wow. It comes out of Ohio to us. Um, we get a truckload in about every 10 weeks. But half inch thick panels, this is what is on the roof of every Cimarron trailer and stock box. Yeah. Yep, honeycomb core, fiberglass, and then a gel coat on the top side. Well, wow, just like a boat, so it yep. stays beautiful all the time and hail resistant and all that stuff. Hail resistant, the white reflects the sunlight. Uh, it's really a thermal barrier, kind of like a Yeti cooler, if you will. Yeah, really. It's gonna keep our trailer about 20% cooler, also considerably quieter. Too. Yeah, that's a big deal, making them yep. quiet. And it's so cool that it's one piece. Yep. Don't worry about a seam or a leaky roof. Yeah, Correct. that's the best way to build a roof on these. So that's really one of the last steps in the construction side of it, putting the roof on the trailer, then it'll get washed and go up to trim shop. Cool. Cool, framing in a hay pod. Cool, it's got bumpers so you can slide up against the front of the bed. Yep. Holy cow, it's like a slant, so you can load two big dogs, huh? This one's actually got a gate, it's pretty neat. Wow, you can hold pigs in this. Yeah, you can put one on each side, or then uh, this gate. Actually, it'll fold over and stay right here to the side and open the whole thing up, too. Well, oh, that's awesome. It's a big, big stock box. Wow, I could haul grandkids in this. This is awesome. Yeah, I'm really wild. Yeah, I got some wild. Oh yeah, it's cool the way you've done the same kind of ventilation door on the yeah. side with struts. Really nice and clean when it's up and then get the air when you need it. Yeah, so you gotta grab that and neighbor help you pull it out. What's that thing weigh all together and empty? Oh, about 250, 300 pounds, depending on the size. Yeah, LED lights. Yeah, I mean, it's almost be good for a 4-H project, hauling your sheep and pigs to the fair. Wow. Yeah, with the floodlights on the outside, turn signals, uh, button lights on the side. That's not a tornado warning, is it? No, it's just a bunch of Okay, well, cool. You got, a, you got a butterfly latch on the back, and yeah, that's awesome. I've even put a fan in one as well. Oh yeah, well that makes sense. Yeah. I mean... And then on the top, when I put the roof on, I had two vents on top that you can close and open. Yeah.